Welcome to a tutorial about twine. We've seen in previous videos, if we want to work with things like statistics, we often need to change the value of the statistics, and then we need some additional interaction. We need a user to click on show results, or we need to queue up something or do something else. And that can be very frustrating for a user to need to click on multiple things to see the values they just changed, or potentially move between passages to see the same results. We know a better solution now. One of the things we can do by using our knowledge of how hooks work, and particularly how hooks and changer macros work with each other, is that we could potentially append, prepend, or more importantly, replace the content of a hook as long as we know its name. Put another way, we can create much more dynamic interactions by getting data from readers or players and then using our knowledge of how the replace macro works with hooks to replace the content of some existing hook within the same passage right after the interaction happens. So as soon as data changes, it's immediately reflected back to the reader or player. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. So this passage right here, it sets up brains to zero, and I have an important right here named hook, brains count, and it sets to a maximum of 10 and a minimum of zero. And notice a pattern we've seen with other examples rely on statistics. Link rerun, because we're interested in rerunning the whole thing every time. A little plus symbol, or plus symbol right here. We're setting brains to brains plus one. We're checking to see if brains is over 10, and if it is, setting it back to 10. And then we're using the replace macro. So the replace macro is going to come up here, look for brains count, which we're using right here, the question mark, and set it to brains and the current value. The same with the decrease, which runs the other way. The minus sign, set brains to brains minus one. If it's less than zero, set brains to zero, and replace brains count with brains. Put another way, we can now have a need, or put another way, we don't have a need to do show result anymore. We can simply replace some content within a passage using a named hook or potentially words or phrases, although it gets slightly more complicated, to change things as we need. Let me show you what this means for us. So I can change this in real time, and this is updating for me. Coming down here, and notice it won't go any down anymore, and if we attempt to push it past 10, it also won't do it. So we're checking a maximum minimum each time using the if macro, using the set macro, but now mixing in something incredibly important, the replace macro, a changer macro to change the content within a passage. So now we are changing this named hooks value right here, brains, to whatever brains and the updated value are. Again, as we start thinking about changer macros and hooks and ways of dividing up a passage into sections, we can then change using changer macros, not only its presentation, style, or size, or color, we can also completely replace it. And this is an incredibly powerful pattern right here to create statistical presentations that we need to increase or decrease various things and then responding to that output, responding to that interaction as it happens. So we can create really dynamic content within Harlow by using the replace macro to replace some content. Notice it's not changing anything over here as part of this link rerun setup, it's changing something somewhere else within the passage. And this is super useful as we think about potentially graphical user interfaces that we're creating or we're changing statistical values. We want it to update in one place and then potentially change it as part of another. So we can start to separate our concerns, our kind of logic in one place and our presentation in another. Now, of course, all the, pre all the previous situations that we presented various statistical things of using link rerun and showing a value or potentially using link rerun with showing the result are all perfectly valid. But we now have knowledge of an approach that is slightly more efficient of just using the replace macro, referring back to the name, which allows us to change something in a different part of the passage by just referring to its name for a particular hook that we want to replace. So a much more efficient thing of a pattern we've seen across multiple videos, but now working with not only if and set, 
but mixing in replace and thinking very importantly about how we can use our knowledge of changer macros with hooks within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.